both. The answer is both Milano and Notion. And I'm not even kidding. I'm a filmmaker and I use both Milano and Notion just about every day. No, I'm not going to say that they've totally changed my life or anything like that, but they have definitely helped me keep organized as well as help make my creative process more efficient and more enjoyable. Though I may be biased because I use both of these tools, in this video I'll discuss what I like about each tool, which one is better for certain tasks, and ultimately by discussing how I use each of these tools, I hope to help you decide which one is better for you and your workflows. If you do a quick search for Notion on my channel, you won't be surprised to hear that I love Notion. I've been using Notion for almost two years now, and I don't see myself stopping anytime soon. So let's just jump right into my laptop and into my Notion dashboard. Uh, my Notion has definitely evolved over the years and I honestly just recently simplified how I use Notion and how I lay it out and everything. Really the biggest draw and the biggest reason I continue to use Notion after two years is Notion's built-in databases. And a database is exactly what it sounds like. It's basically just a place to store information. And for me, it's information that I need to access and reference on a regular basis. So right here in my homepage of my Notion, again, as you see, it's very, very uh, simplified. Uh, I'm sure if you watch other Notion videos, some people have more, I guess, uh, sophisticated and involved dashboards and layouts and that's there's nothing wrong with that that's what works for them for me i like to keep it simple so right here on my home page as i said mentioning the databases so i have three different pages and that's what notion calls them uh displayed on my home page so i have vision the list resistance training finances memory card backup and weekly reset so essentially I'll go through these pretty quick because I've made some videos on, on these specific pages, um, namely my vision page and my finances page. And I think I made one on the list page too. So basically vision is uh, my digital version of my vision board. Um, I try to update it every year and even, you know, go back and reference it, right? Because, you know, if I want to keep my life on track and on vision, then I will reference that. The list is more of a bucket list. And then this is probably one of the more recent ones. It's a resistance training uh, page. And honestly, this one really just has links to workout routines that I reference because I've been trying to, you know, uh, keep consistent with exercise and working out. And then finances, this is probably the biggest, uh, most popular video on my, on my channel at the moment is my uh, video about how to make a zero-based budget in Notion. So uh, you, you can actually go see it. I might blur things out because you know you don't need to know all my business, but if you wanna know how to make a budget in Notion, again, I made a video on that. And yeah, memory card backup and weekly reset. These ones are more like checklists and ways to, again, keep track. And this has helped me, for one, keep on track in terms of backing up footage. And two, um, if I need to go out and shoot something and it's, you know, kind of, uh, red and gun and I'm like, oh, I need a memory card. I can look here and I have things set up so I can know how much time is on that card, at least um, at the time of the last backup, which I have here too. And if you're interested in how I backup footage and all that, I can make a video on that too. So just let me know in the comments. Weekly reset, I don't use this one as much, but um, yeah, maybe it needs a little bit of updating, but all in all, what I want you to get from Notion and at least how I use it is that, again, these are things that I reference on a regular basis, at least monthly. And one thing I forgot to mention is that in my vision board, it also has the similar cards on my homepage. And I've actually, it's a work in progress. And I think that's also why I like Notion is that, again, it can change with your needs, it can change with your life. And it's so easy to customize it and fit it to your needs. So I think the, the latest uh, card that I updated in my vision board is the World Traveler 
section. So basically here, I mean, right now travel is still not really like a thing, but I put down places I've been and I plan to put in photos and videos from those trips because another thing I, I've been trying to apply into my life is just more intentional do documentation as a filmmaker, as a content creator, and as a hobbyist street photographer, documentary photographer. I just wanna make sure that I am, again, intentionally documenting these memories and not just like, you know, spray and pray and all that. So uh, again, that's uh, going to be a little bit more deeper into how I use Notion. But as you can see, again, I have kept it pretty simple. Again, we wanna see my list. Um, again, this probably needs some updating. Uh, yeah, and I'll go into why maybe my notion is as isn't as up to date um, when we start talking about Milanote. I think the last thing I want to mention before we move on to talk about Milanote is the cool thing about Notion is that you can change your covers for your pages and for your databases, and you know they have a whole library of photos that you want to use. And you can. What's cool is that they're even partnered with Unsplash, which is my go-to stock photo site. You can go in here and just look for anything, look, uh, look for a uh, video. And again, it gives you all these little pictures that you can use to customize your templates and your databases. Like, so again, you can kind of know like, this is where my homepage is, this is where my bucket list is, so on and so forth. And yeah, I really like that. It keeps me coming back because I just come here and it's like, wow, I have this personalized dashboard website just for me. All right, I think that's all I have to say about Notion. Now let's get into Milano. So Notion may be my first love, I recently found a new love and that is Milano. All right, so this is my homepage of my Milano. And right off the bat, what I love about Milano is its flexibility and its intuitive nature. And I'll explain more about what I mean by that. So just like Notion, Milano is also very customizable, but I would say they're customizable in a different way. I would say Notion, again, Notion has more of the built-in templates and it's kind of laid out for you, whether it's you know a table, it's a gallery, it's a timeline, it's a calendar. And again, that's kind of more of a structured thing and you work within that structure of that database. Whereas Milano, though Milano does also offer templates, it's so much more uh, flexible. So I can drag anything and put it wherever I want. And there's no really limit to that. I can put anything where I want it to be. I'm gonna put this back because I like, I like it where it was. And again, it's just more flexible. And I think this helps for me as a creative when I'm thinking about ideas, it's more fluid, it's more flowing. And sometimes a rigid structure doesn't really serve when I am brainstorming, when I'm thinking of a shot list, when I'm thinking, if I'm just brainstorming, I'm doing a mood board for my next project. So it helps me just like move things around. I can start with like, you know, a fairly simple layout to, and then I can expand beyond that. And then I'll, I'll show you my layouts for other things. Um, very soon here, let me look at my script. And actually, let me mention that. I'm actually reading, not reading, but like referencing the script for this video in Milano. So yeah, as you see, I'm, I'm using it right now. Um, this is my little layout for every YouTube video that I've made, at least thus far this year. It just helps me with scripting and thinking out sections for videos. And yeah, I mean, maybe it's a psychological thing, but it's just helped me uh, again, like break up videos in terms of like intro. This is chapter one, this is chapter two, or act one, two, three. And again, it just helps me organize that creative flow and that information uh, much easier and much like more enjoyably for myself. And I used to, I used to script all my videos in Notion, but I guess I just prefer this layout, this kind of more, uh, you, go, you know, you can build upon it layout than rather more of a rigid kind of structure that Notion has. So as I said, Milano also offers Rather than databases, they offer templates. But of course, um, if you're familiar with Notion, Notion also has a template library, which is also very awesome. Um, and it's something that was very helpful when I first started out with Notion. Again, Milano has a similar thing. 
Um, when you go to make a new board, I'm just gonna do it in my YouTube dashboard. You go here, look, it gives you choose a, a template and you can go through these and just look for what you need. You can say, you know, do you need a project plan? Do you need a mood board? Do you need a creative brief? You can go to more templates and I'm a film person. So these are like very enticing to me. Pre-production plan, film brainstorming, character profile, mood board. And I think again, going back to the flexibility of this is that once you do choose a template, you know, not everything fits on the page, but that's okay. Like a notion allows you to again, expand beyond the margins of your screen. And I think that's helpful, again, when you are just ideating, when you are just brainstorming, you don't want to be restricted by, again, the margin of a screen or a paper. And, you know, let's say you do go beyond the margins of your screen, Milano lets you zoom out. You can conceive your whole, you know, whether it's a brainstorming session or a mood board or a storyboard, you can see your whole idea flow on the screen. Of course, it's going to be smaller, but Again, you can see it all. And then when you're gonna zoom back in, you just zoom back in. Awesome, right? All right, so I'm gonna end the middle note section actually on my home page to see how I've used to set it up. So first things first, on the left side of my screen, you'll see boards that I have. And these boards are essentially the things that I'm focusing on this moment in time. So whether it's a isolated project or it's an ongoing project. So ongoing projects for me, are my income streams. I'm building up multiple income streams as a filmmaker. I recently made the transition to freelance, a freelance filmmaker from being a full-time corporate videographer. And I actually intend to make more videos about that in the future, about my freelance journey, and as well as how am I building up these income streams for myself and you know what kind of streams am I making? So stay tuned for that. I'm obviously a YouTuber and at least very much aspiring to be a consistent YouTuber content creator. So I have a board specifically for that. And then this one I'll probably blur out um, because uh, it's, it's in development at the moment, um, but hopefully I'll get to talk about it uh, someday soon, but it is uh, a creative project. And the last word I have over here is archive. So. It is what it sounds like once I'm done with a project or a certain board, I will put it here to know that I'm, you know, it's not something I need to look at from day to day. Right now I have job shirts and production schedule and sometimes I just put things in there that just don't work for me anymore. And then the other thing I have on my Milnote homepage is my work schedule. As a freelancer, it's super important for you to set, obviously you can set your own schedule, but to really define, okay, on this day, I'm going to focus on this from, for however many hours. I'll probably blur it out so you don't know all my business, but basically for each day, I'm like, okay, I'm going to focus on writing. I'm going to focus on shooting, you know, so on and so forth. Or I have client projects that come priority, so I have to make rules like that for myself. And then lastly, what I like think I really want to emphasize, if you look closely, you realize that these pictures, these links right here are actually links to my notion so i've actually built my notion within my milano and that's essentially how i use milano and notion together i would say i spend most of my time nowadays on milano but i use notion because i like the databases because they help me again organize information that i reference on a regular basis and that's about it um again if you wanted me to go in depth of anything milano or notion just let me know in the comments and I'm open to making videos about it. In the end, hopefully I've made it clear that I see value in both Milano and Notion. And the good news is, is that it only cost me $15 a month to use both. So I have a personal plan for Notion, which only cost me $5 a month and Milano that cost me $10 a month. And of course I know everyone's budget is a little bit different. Um, you know, if you want to choose one over the other, I think you'll get by you know, just fine if you just use one over the other. Um, again, I personally think it's worth paying $15 to be able to use both of them in conjunction. But again, that's just me. And as I said in the beginning, I just hope this video gave you better insight into which app would better suit your needs. 
All right, YouTube, if you found this video helpful, I really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more from me and ring that bell so you don't miss a thing. Thanks for watching and until next video, please take care.